let's have um, a short class about a method called Golgen Ray O. This method was used especially uh, to, uh, to war prisoners and it is mainly for us in our school an anthropological study. It is something that it is so violent and uh, it was used to, 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 to these purposes of war and um, therefore for uh, some generations some masters thought that it, it was better um, not to keep teaching it, not to keep showing it especially when um, doctors, artists and um, other professionals that use their, that use their, their hand um, often in their, in their job um, so let's see, this goal comes from hard Gain comes from reduction, Ray comes from spirit, and O comes from Ho, that is method. So it is something like the method um, of re reducing the hard spirit. Uh, we're going to see some forms, and uh, we have to have in mind previously that this was not performed actually as a technique against a foe, but uh, um, uh, in instead to a war prisoner. So. Let's start with the first origins with the most uh, simple technique. So I have here Sensei Daniel from Brazil. Um, and we have here Shibujo Matias from Paraguay as well. So let's start with the first techniques. I'll ask Sensei Daniel to do it with me. Let's suppose she attacks us in Mapuche. Very nice. Something quite important here is to use the concept of Mu and Yu that we we can find in our, in our techniques, in our studies. So, we first, to have him quite locked in the end, we have to um, go uh, finding our ways through emptiness. So, what we're going to do is we're going to empty his power first, as we have said, and then um, uh, lock him arm over arm and so on. So, we're going to have this first over his own body have his wrist locked here in a tight position. We're going to reach his other arm, exactly. Then we're going to use the, his own weight against himself, like this, in a tight position, exactly. We could put him, we could actually step, what they would do is they, they could step on his hand, over his hand, lock in his hand and then make him fall to the side we have this very tight position here. It is actually done here or here as well. It becomes harder for him. Exactly. Then we may step over his hand. It is a very uncomfortable position. And then bring him to the side. Of course, he can because his hand is quite locked here. So, uh, other ways of doing this same, this same technique is once he's locked there, they could use the jaw or they could use the, the bokto, the sword itself. To lock him even more. So, as long as he's here, one more time, one, two, we could use, we could lock even more tight, even more. Nope, reaching his hand there and here, putting his weight over, and then using some kind of rope or using some kind of a way to fasten even more and he simply couldn't move. If I leave him, if I leave him here and uh, fasten and uh, use a rope to bring this or the, the Bokuto as a leverage, it gets quite difficult for him to move. It's quite uncomfortable. Although these are the although this is the first idea, there were other methods of using emptiness. For instance, he comes with a Yokomuchi. So, using the emptiness, you know, emptying his, his movement, bringing him forward. From here, stopping and bringing his other hand one more time ahead. You can see this gap. This was, I'm, I'm not pressing actually, but this is, he's already uh, on his limit. I could step again. Exactly, then use, for example, um, Everything is doing a job. This is it. You could have him restrained here. You could use his own touch key. 
in, 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 in this position and um, pressing his cervical downward as well and locking him, I mean binding him with any rope we, we could use. Some other, some other form is he is in Seiza, exactly. We could first cross his feet like this, then one arm below his foot, the other arm below his foot. Exactly. And then bringing him backward very slowly, like this. Okay, so here he is on his limit. One more time. In a very uncomfortable position. I could also use one more time. Let's see what happens. And I use this. If I press downward even more, he is on his limit. This is a uh, quite uncomfortable position. Let me release him here. Okay. And now we could go for this same method of go game that I ask both of you. Suppose you are here standing. That's exactly. Here we are. So, for instance, uh, in this case, we could also use the Shibatsu Gami. That is something. Um, typical of our culture. Now, what we, what we can do is going down exactly and use, see, the back arm like this, pressed. Exactly. Just like this. From here, we could bring him downward violently, but also we could use the forms of Shibatsugami. Locking them and bringing them together. Here we have their limit already. Um, something also anthropological and historical that we can see that, that they used is when they, when they had the tambo or the tenkai and they would use it to fasten even more. That is, they could do it as a means to tighten them. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. And a bit more. Okay. And from here we could easily um, bring them you know, back and forth. We could lead them to anywhere we, anywhere they could, and also bring them to a seiza position. Exactly. Even sometimes downward, right now, which I will do very slowly. Okay. So this is a very fragile and uncomfortable position for them if I let them lose. Okay. Here we have it. So in terms of history. Um, there are uh, stories about people who were left, you know, under under sun and uh, under very un uncomfortable situations during um, war situations and so on. Something else we can see here, for example, imagine we're talking about just one person. Please see exactly he's here. Okay, we have this situation, okay, and this situation that is very uncomfortable to him, then stepping on his hands like this, so we could use jaw in here or tambo in here or even leaving him in in this position, no. which is very, very uncomfortable. Something else we can see, yet with just one person, is when he is, he may be in Seiza, but he's trying to say, okay. So here we are. 
Imagine we have the same position near a protegenated position, okay? So we have this first, this over, and then we're going to bring him downward. Very nice, please sit inside first, so it can be more comfortable, please sit. Okay, here we are. And then using this angle of scapula here and here. The more I come backward, you know, the, the tougher it is for him. So I could now bend his arms very slowly. His weight is working against him. You could bring him downward. Okay. Leaving him here in this position or turning him to the side a bit, which makes it more uncomfortable for one side and then locking or using the jo or bokuto here. Now, exactly. Um, other form we can see, and we, we have a two kick, is there side by side like this. Very nice. Okay. So, other form we can see is. Joining their, their arms, crossing, double crossing their arms like this. Very nice. This is it. And then using first like this. So the, uh, back, this back to back condition, you know, uh, is, is pressing, is almost um, doing a double pressure over the arms. And uh, now please relax very slowly. Okay. Okay. Please use it. So, if uh, please you can rotate the show. So it is a, a difficult situation for them. Could have this hand yet. Over here. And so these are all techniques of go and ray po. It is something I just said. We're doing very slowly, just as a study. This is not any kind of, of practice, just to review and show some of the uh, old concepts of Bugay, some of the old concepts of our practice. Thank you very much.